Hello everyone and welcome back to Lathe Station and Base Construction in Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. We seem to have a dual window first before we have a return window for the space plane to come back to Kerbin. So we will launch some missions to Joule and then while they're on their way try to bring the space plane back, well start it on its journey. So after it starts on its journey then the dual, new Joule missions will arrive and then finally the space plane will get back hopefully. So that is the plan. Uh, let me cook up some stuff in the VAB to send over there and see what we can do. Okay, so I might have cooked up something weird here. And the concept is that maybe instead of having our space plane drop off the base modules, we have the space planes be the base modules. And so I've come up with this. I've called it It's a Base. And... Uh, in the nose cone, actually we've got that protruding out, I need to fix that. Um, basically we've got a docking hub there, and maybe I should put one less battery on each of those, because I've got batteries stacked there, so it doesn't poke through the cargo hatch, because we know the docking ports can explode, and we don't actually know whether they're going to be safe in this cargo nose, but the idea is that one of these could potentially dock to another one, especially since the docking tolerances are fairly broad as we've seen, though that's in space, I don't know about on the ground, or whether they even work on the ground, but we can find out. Uh, so we could dock base modules together and maybe retract the landing gear afterwards or something like that, that could be a very dangerous thing too. Uh, so, yeah, they could taxi together and dock together. I've decided to go with a smaller wing, and again, it's actually a stabilizer, because there's no benefit to actually using the wing pieces, I think. Uh, they, these have the same heat tolerance, same impact tolerance, and everything like that, unless they've changed stuff, but they're not saying it here at all. So, uh, yeah, uh, but it says, yeah, yeah, anyway, I, I don't think it says anything to discredit it. So we're using just stabilizers for mass purposes and it'll just be the base module. We won't take it off of lathe. That simplifies things, doesn't it? So the purpose, the reason why it's still a space plane is that we want it to be able to land exactly at our base location. And either our base modules have got to be little rovers to get together or they're going to be able to taxi like planes. And so we're going to use the jet engines to have a taxi like a plane, that might be better than using the rover wheels, at least that's what I'm thinking right now. Uh, also the benefit to having it be a space plane, oh, that is a base, means that it'll still have a lot of fuel free. And I don't know if we could just use the internal fuel to get to lathe or anything like that, probably that's pushing it, we'll need boosters and everything. Uh, in fact, the thrust weight ratio wise we definitely do, because that engine can't lift us off the ground. but we don't need as big a booster system as we did with the space plane trying to carry cargo and we actually deliver more to the surface, right? Uh, the cargo hatch uh, in this form factor can't carry two of these base modules, but this can. I say base modules, but they're really station modules, right? Well, I don't know what they are. They're, they're oriented vertically, so they're probably base modules, but I've put them this way, which is wrong. Uh, but this was more convenient. Uh, they're crew cabins. I mean, that's vague. So, yeah, eight seaters. But we'll imagine that them being oriented like this is not a problem. Um, I just realized that my fin is in the way of the ladder. So that is a problem. Maybe we'll move the ladder pieces up front. Let's move these back a bit. I've made the wing pieces very thick so that they have better tolerance because that's apparently a thing. Okay, so that's the it's a base. Now the question, and the reason I'm going to test it on Kerbin first, is given that we're not going to be trying to have this lift off from lathe and uh, get back to orbit, we don't need the most energetic engines necessarily. We don't need the afterburners. And so I think maybe the Weasleys will do. We just need to make sure that this can fly with it and also potentially get to different locations with it. So we want range, we want efficiency, uh, making sure that you know if we deorbit in an incorrect way, we're you know a little bit off. 
we can ultimately land at the right location. That's the goal. So, I am going to flight test this with the small wing, which has less drag. I don't know whether it's optimal to have a smaller wing for the leaf capture part, because we want drag there. On the other hand, when we park a lot of these together, we don't want a lot of huge wings in each other's way. So it'd be better if the base modules are a little bit tighter and that we are taking up less area with non-base module things. At least, at least I feel like that's a good principle to go with. And that's why I've gone with a smaller wing. So we have to check that we can take off with this and fly with this. Also flying in Leif's atmosphere, which is thinner, will be a little bit more difficult. Okay, so all that being said, let's see what happens here. Uh, please tell me there's no Kerbal that snuck in. Oh. Oh, game crashed. Okay, that's not good. Well, anyway, uh, restarting did give me an opportunity to kick out certain Kerbals from our vehicle. Well, that one anyway. So we only have 11 here. So maybe we are somewhat limited in terms of Kerbalage. Well, it's intact. That's always good. Okay, can it fly? That is our question. Here we go. I really need to cut out the suspension again. Uh, it made a sound like it broke something. It's continually making the sound like it's broken. What? Oh, is it not liking this intake? Oh, somebody had mentioned it randomly going uh, uh, reverse. Was this it? Is that what it is? Huh. Yeah, I hadn't seen that before, but now I'm seeing it. Cruise. Okay, well, looks like I've got it too, whatever it was. Interesting. Okay. Uh, that is a bug that I have now seen. So, person who said that, there you go. Uh, is it just the Weasley? Well, I mean, some engines don't have reverse, so... But, what causes it? It's weird, but let me mount this a little bit higher. They can't have made it because we're right at the center of mass. Get confused, could they? Let me just decisively move it forward to the center of mass. I want it right at the center of mass so that the tank drains properly. Uh, but now that's even more at the center of mass. Let me just move it back. I'll move it back. Let me turn off auto switch. Okay, what is this auto switch thing? Just turn it off. I don't know why. The, whatever the auto switch logic is, it's wrong. <laughs> so the solution is turn off auto switch. Oh, I tried to reach for my joystick, which doesn't work and they still haven't gotten joystick support right. Um, so that's useless. Back to keyboard, among other gripes with the implementation of, thing implementation of things in the game. I need to get rid of the monoprofound again. We're definitely not docking like that with this. Okay, easily getting off the ground. But thrust-wise, this is very limited. So it could be dangerous to just rely on these. And, well, in this case, we're carrying all the hydrogen. Ultimately, we might not be carrying all the hydrogen when we land. Probably won't be carrying all the hydrogen when we land. Okay, well, I don't like the flight dynamics very much. And that's probably because I moved the jets back. Now that I've figured out what the problem is, we really need to move those forward again. Hmm. It doesn't like to behave below 90 meters per second. Okay, well, I'm not actually fond of flying this anymore. I'm just gonna revert it. I think I've learned enough there. Let me try fly it with the engines where I wanted them to be and turning off the auto switch thing.
right from the start. Why you'd want it to auto-switch into reverse mode, I have no idea. <laughs> that is, uh, I think they meant that function, oh, the docking port is still poking there, but why, it's not poking on the other side. Hold on a sec, maybe I accidentally undid the wrong thing. Um, yeah, I think their auto-switch is meant for afterburners, not for reverse. And they shouldn't implement the auto-switch thing is this not centered? Because this docking port is poking- Oh, there's another docking port there. Whoops. That's why. I missed that. Okay. That's why it's poking out. Okay. But yeah, I think that auto switch shouldn't be implemented on this engine. It's for the cruise versus afterburner situation. So they just need to delete that off of it. There's no good reason for a cruise and reverse engine to have that feature. But... What about if we use the Panther, which is, it has less thrust initially, but it does have the afterburner. I'm pretty sure the Weasley's going to win on this, but let's see. Well, it can get off the ground at 75, but yeah, actually I want to go back down immediately. I don't think this is going to get fast enough to do anything useful. I like the fact that the engines have vectoring though. No, go down. Oh, why is it? Why Those wheels were turned ahead of time, weren't they? I had been looking at that. I thought they would straighten out, but those wheels were turned and they were not unturning. Hmm. That may be... maybe another problem. Fortunately, I'm not sending these base modules over to Lathe Crude. We'll have some other crew thing land at them, hopefully. Something safer. But, uh, okay. So, Weasley's... Oh, but I should turn off the auto switch. Oh no. Um, maybe we should do that ahead of time. It's still trying to do auto switch. Well, it's still acting like it's doing auto switch. So, it still acts like it does auto switch when I turn off auto switch inside. But then when I want to auto switch enabled turned off, when I set cruise, it stayed cruise. It stays cruise. Hopefully. Um, I don't know. Seems weird. Well, for some reason, turning is weird. Well, I mean, we do have weird coupling in roll because of the location of our controls. But it's still... I'm trying to turn right. And it is not turning right. Uh, oh, okay, okay. It seems to like yawing more than it likes rolling. I don't know, it seems a bit underpowered still. You know what, you help with roll too. I'm hurt at this point. Or maybe you can, maybe you can. Uh, yeah, lots of roll yaw coupling in this. I guess I can deal with it, but it's not great. So basically I have to press Q and A at the same time when I turn left, and E and D the same time when I turn right. Or it's not going to work. It won't roll properly. Otherwise. And that's because both the canards and the surfaces on the main wing are doing both pitch and roll. I think. Okay, coming in.
Whoa, bounced. Oh, that's a worry, isn't it? No, no, don't bounce. Did it try to go reverse again? Oh no. And it says methane air deprived though, which is suspicious. Okay. Well, hmm. Question marks here, but let's recover it. Okay, well, I think we should pack it up and send it off to Lathe. Oh, the, once again, Desmi snuck into the tuna can. Um, Maybe we should just have a normal shuttle thing, but the shuttle things are very troublesome. I think we'll strap boosters on to the side of it. Even though those fins are going to cause problems for that. Barely clears the jet engine and this. Um, thrust vector wise... Initially it might not be too bad, but eventually it's going to be pretty bad. What if we have another one at the bottom? <laughs> oh, this is bad, isn't it? Okay, um... That's a lot of Delta V. Three of them. I mean, they've got to be cheap. They're SRBs, right? So that's a plus. It's like in Star Trek, there's a class... Of, uh, in the old Star Trek, there's a class that has two warp nacelles and then there's three warp nacelles. We've got three. Well, that should be reasonably balanced, right? I'm definitely going to strut those. Just one strut apiece. 3,000. Well, after that, the nuke should be able to handle it, right? Maybe. I don't know. 3,375 is tough. I may be being overly optimistic with this version, but... Uh, let's see, isn't that the root part? Liquid boosters might be a better idea, but for now, it's a base launch. Let's see about this SRB version. Almost forgot I needed to put an antenna that could communicate with Kerbin, preferably without extending and retracting. Uh, so, I've got one there. That might be overkill though. Maybe I should just put one of these. Hopefully that assessment is correct. I mean, previously we had used these, which are even smaller. So I think it'll be alright. I thought about putting it inside there, but I think they all stick out when I put them inside there. If they're not one of the extending ones. Okay, so with that, let's launch. Um... This is not launching. Well, um, it pre-reverted to launch here. Uh, I think this launch clamp is in the wrong, I mean, reverted to VAB. <laughs> okay, something went wrong there. I don't know, I don't know what it was, but okay, we definitely should revert. I don't sense anything is happening right now. Um... Oh, uh, yeah, it's just not showing me what it's supposed to be showing me. Let me just restart again. Oh, I think what's happening is it's because I tried to launch it on the runway. But that's still weird. Oh, uh, this is all weird. Okay, well, I've switched to the launch pad. Let's see if it works now, but... I don't know, maybe there's some more fundamental flaw about this thing. It is pretty tightly packed. I don't know. Yeah, there's something about this craft file that it keeps doing this. <laughs> this is this is a more interesting issue, isn't it? Hmm. 
Uh, well, let's let's go with that. Let's try something. Let's try something at the runway. Nah, it's not gonna launch anything at the runway. This is all pear shaped. Uh, it loads the main menu. <laughs> uh, but I don't think I can get back into a save. Okay, well, since the game is against me trying to launch that space plane slash base, I've decided to cook up a new module for our station instead and try that first. So we're going to use the same launcher, but we're going to launch a not science module. This will be one of these uh, passenger modules, I guess we'll call it. And then it also has a docking hub for smaller docking ports, though. This docking hub wouldn't be great for the space plane because I think the space plane would have trouble actually fitting in with these things on. But we need these so that we have enough fuel without this getting too long. It's actually pretty long already. And I do need to fix the fairing. So uh, let's not have that fairing enabled. Mm. No, there's something wrong here. Let me just try and build it from scratch. Okay, done. All right. All right, we have a fairing. We just gotta call this a hub. Okay, we're gonna try this out. Please launch safely. Okay, well, it's on a pad instead of going back to the VAB, so that's a positive. Okay, we'll take it. Oh, the launch clamps are weird though, huh? They're not extending all the way down. Oh boy. Okay. It's going up a bit. It's probably because I had the engine buried in the floor of the VAB earlier. Well, at least we can get something on its way. We're past the speed of sound. Oh, overheating. Great. We're not even going that fast. And there's a fairing. Tuba. Well, fairing. Oh no, the dish ended up clipped into... I, I, I rearranged things and these fuel tanks... Well, that fuel tank is now clipping into that dish. Gosh darn it. Just pretend I never told you that, and you didn't notice. Okay, we are in orbit. I don't think it's very noticeable. Just, yeah. Know that we have a communication dish, and you have no idea where it is, okay? <laughs> anyway. Uh, Alright, we are transferring out. Out to jewel time. Now the mystery is, why the heck can't we launch the space plane? One of the many horrible things that I did with the space plane actually causes it not to be launchable. Is it the Weasleys with their peculiar um, tendency to reverse themselves? Is it the booster configuration? Because they're too close to other stuff and maybe having collider issues or maybe don't have enough struts? Alright, we'll just take that for now. We'll have an encounter. Nice clouds. Okay, well, I probably should have gone already, but let's go. Okay, so how close am I? Um, it's not showing me anything yet. Again, I wish we could see the intercepts without creating a node. When we've targeted something, of course. I'm just gonna do the correction right now, since we have the Delta V. Okay, so we've got a node, let's go to it. Uh, 
Okay, bringing it in here. Well, that that's actually a pretty good leaf pass, though. Um, oh no, it's actually a little bit over there. Uh, okay, let's just skip that for now. The module does have enough delta V to do things a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to decouple from this stage. I should have had it dumped into Jules' atmosphere to dispose of it. That would have been good. But it's okay. So there's the new module. It'll be on its way to the station. And I don't want to like time warp yet or do anything yet because I still want to launch that space plane. And so I don't want to get us away from the dual transfer window. This is on a crash course now. This is on a crash course. I wanted that on a crash course. But yeah, I think I'll leave it here. And off to the side, I'll try and pry apart that space plane to see what might be causing the fact that it can't be launched and hopefully salvage it and then we'll start off with that next time uh, but hopefully this isn't too short an episode for you guys but yeah that is the situation for some reason the game like freezes and crashes and does bad things when I try to launch that so I'll try to get to the bottom of it so with that Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.